interesting. Okay. His labor theory of value, something he took from classical economist David Ricardo, mind you, is not strictly correct. However, it is certainly true that many, if not most, workers are being exploited for profit, and that, on the other hand, many owners of capital receive immense income from which they did nothing. All right. Let's take that apart a little bit. It is true that his theory of value... Um, um, excuse me. It is true that his labor theory of value, something he borrowed from classical economist David Ricardo, mind you, is not strictly correct. Okay, it's not that it's not strictly correct. It's that it's wrong. It's fucking wrong. And I love how you try to get him off the hook by being like, well, he borrowed this from Ricardo. Okay, Ricardo was wrong. And Adam Smith, who worked on it before him, was wrong. The labor, of the the labor theory of value is absolutely wrong. It's not correct, and we can prove that. And the Austrian school has proved this. Okay, so the labor theory of value is, uh, I mean, basically, in layman's terms, they're saying that where, where uh, products derive, they derive value from labor. So you could see, like, in kind of a simple way how this would uh, uh, be plausible, right? So the idea of if you were looking at, like, well, why is, just to take more modern examples or something like that, but if I go, well, why is, like, um, a jet, like an airplane, more expensive than um, like a mug or something like that. You could say, well, it's because there's so much more labor now, that, that goes into that. As a theoretical, a bit like with that, let's say I accidentally cured cancer. Like, let's say I just mix together penicillin with some shark. I don't, I don't fucking know. But out of the Petri dish comes something that kills all diseases. And, and then I get the patent, and people respect patents because we didn't listen to that guy that we had on a little while ago. <laughs> and now all, of a sudden I'm, now all of a sudden I'm rich as shit, even though I didn't do anything. Right. Like, well, well, just to prove that wrong, let's, the, the example would be that if you did it in, in five minutes. Right, that's what so, I'm saying. So saying it didn't take a lot of yeah. labor. Didn't take like this whole effort. Right, sure. But it's it, what what the um what the Austrian economists figured out is that value is subjective. Okay, value is subjective, and the labor theory of value is absolutely incorrect. Labor does not add value to anything. Labor adds a cost to the production of an item. Okay, so it is true that if I'm building a big jet plane and this is going to cost, I, I need like a hundred men working a thousand hours each in order to do this, then that will add to the cost of what it costs me to make that airplane. But the labor does not create the value at all. What creates the value is the demand, period. That's where it comes from. That's where value comes from, period, end of story. This is Now, again, by the way, I say this like this is really obvious and simple, and it kind of is, but it's also like brilliant men came before me to think of all this. So I'm not trying to make it out like, oh, I, you know, like, look, man, if I lived in a time before science and there were clouds in the sky and it started lightning, I'm sure I'd be the first one to be like, the gods are angry with us. Like, we didn't dance the right way or something. So... People have figured out scientific stuff before me. I get the benefit of that. But look, this is this is pretty straightforward. Well, it, just to kind of simplify it, the sure. other thing is if, if you go by the labor theory of value, you're also assuming that if someone's bad at something, they should be paid more for it. Like, so for example, let's say me and you are a carpenter. I can get something done in an hour because I'm better at it. It takes you 10 hours to do the same thing. So the labor theory would say, oh, well, you should be paid more. That's right. Which and, is really stupid. And actually, if you, if you read Marx's stuff, he starts having problems with this after oh, a really? while where he has to start going like, well, the surgeon's labor is worth more than someone else. But then he falls into this circular logic where you're like, wait, but I thought the value comes from labor. So how is labor more valuable or less valuable than I? He, it all falls apart. Here's, here's how I just yeah, it's think really of it. It's really stupid. He, yeah. Here's how I think of it simply. Simplistically, right? You could put all the labor in the world into something. If there's zero market demand for it, the value is zero. Let's say I take a jagged boulder, okay? Right. There's a huge boulder, and I go, I'm going to lift this over my head and drop it until I smooth out this whole boulder. And I work fucking 40 hours in a row, just the most grueling thing ever. But then nobody wants to buy it from me. Guess what my labor was worth? Zero. Zero, zero, zero. It doesn't matter. Here's the whole thing. Value comes from the fact that people want to purchase something, okay? So if people want something, if they desire something and there's demand for it, then you will put labor into making it because you know you can sell it to somebody else, okay? That's where the value of something comes into place. Now, the labor that you put into it is a cost. 
That's, that's associated with the production of that value. But yes, uh, uh, it, it doesn't mean anything. And just for another example, we have things now that are made by machines. I guess they would have to be valueless, right? Because there was no human labor attached to those things. So this is just, it's a completely flawed uh, uh, way of looking at, at economics. And it is the underpinning of Marx's entire philosophy. It's the underpinning of his entire economic worldview. Because if you look at things that like, if you, if you look at the idea that labor is what creates value, right, then it becomes very easy to look at it and say, oh, wait a minute, the boss is exploiting all of these people because they're creating all the value with their labor, right? They're creating all of the value with their labor, and he's making a profit. So in other words, he's not giving them all of their value for their labor. He's keeping a bunch of their labor, but it's their fucking labor. Labor does not create value. If you realize that, the whole thing starts to fall apart. Labor doesn't create value. It's like, look, why would I need an employer then if my labor creates the value? I've got, all the, I've got my labor right here. I can just start working. Is the problem is I don't have anything to create any value, uh, anything of value. I can just start working, punching walls and running in place. It doesn't create anything of any value. Now, if somebody else is willing to invest in a factory and they'll hire me at the factory because I go into the factory and I have all the, 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 the equipment, the means of production, as Marx would refer to them, um, now that I have those, I can create something of value. And this is where the value comes from because we know we're anticipating what people are going to want. Now, the other thing that, that's interesting about this that the Austrian economists really figured out is that if um, value was not subjective, okay? So let's say we, we, you go with the labor theory of value and there's a, a derivative value attached to everything from the amount of labor. So in other words, they'd be saying labor is objective. It's not subjective, right? Because say something took eight hours to build, then that's more valuable than something that took four hours to build, right? So if labor was objective and labor was not subjective, you would have no economy because you would have no trade. Why would people ever trade? I mean, maybe the only way it would happen is if people were grossly ignorant, but otherwise, why would somebody ever trade anything? I mean, you would never trade anything, of, there'd be no reason. I mean, if we both had something that um, w w both took four hours of labor in order to create, oh, there'd be no reason to trade because they're equal, right? So there's no difference in value. Why would we trade that? And if you had something more valuable, I would certainly never trade you something less valuable for that. But what happens all over the place is we have constant trade in every type of uh, economy, even in the fucking Marxist economies. They had all their fucking black markets where they're trading like crazy because, as the Austrian economists figured out, value is subjective. Because it all comes from human demand and it all comes from what human beings want, different people want different things. So you might trade me a mug for a fucking, you know, I don't know, a pack of cigarettes because you wanted cigarettes and I wanted the mug. I put more value on that and you put more value on this. So the, the whole theory is completely fucking wrong. And, it, and it, it is the underpinning of everything that Marxist goes after. Now, when you understand that, you, you start to realize that, oh, actually... Nobody's exploiting anybody in a voluntary arrangement. We're both adding value. We're both adding value. So, and then, of course, also time preference uh, comes into this uh, uh, as well. Because if you're, let's say, um, I'm the capitalist, right? And um, let's say you have, I don't know, whatever. Like, Rob, you have a, an idea that you can, you can create a product with your labor, right? So let's say you, um, you, you're like, whatever it is, like you're, you're going to build some widget and you know that a lot of people want this so you can sell it and you know how to build this widget, right? So that's what you want to do. However, you don't have any capital. You don't have any capital uh, uh, in order to buy the stuff you need to start building, right? So you might ask me for a loan to start building that, right? Now, the, the reason I say time preference comes into this is because you go, okay, now let's say you need $1,000, and you say, oh, I'll give you, if I was going to give you the $1,000, and you go, I'll give you back $1,000 in a year from right now. Well, truthfully, in that deal, you'd be exploiting me, right? Because I just lose out on the time preference of having my money, and you get it, and you get to take this money and go start fucking making money off that shit. 
So really, if anything, that would be more exploitative toward me, and that's why it's very hard to find someone to loan you money at 0% interest. Because, okay, number one, all it does from, from my end, right, if I'm giving you $1,000 and you're giving me back $1,000 in a year, well, all that happens is for the next year I don't have that $1,000. I don't get anything out of it, and oh, by the way, something might go wrong, and you don't have that money to give back to me in a year. You might default on this loan. So no one's going to do that. However, I might say to you, well, how about you give it back to me with 10% interest? And then you calculate, well, you can make X amount of dollars by building these widgets and selling them. So it's also worthwhile for you to take this loan, start a business, and then we can both profit off of this. Now, you, if you go by the stupid labor theory of value, I sat back and didn't do any work and you did all the work. Therefore, I'm exploiting you. But if you go based in fucking reality, then it's like, no, nobody's exploiting anybody. In fact, I provided you with the means to go make some money, and you provided me in return with, with a, a profit on my money or some interest on my money. Okay, So if you understand from the Austrian perspective that value is subjective and when you're making a voluntary transaction, we both perceive that we're going to benefit from this, there is no exploitation. So the whole thing that Marx, so it's like, you know, in, in the article, this guy just puts it out there like it's like, um, here, let me get back to reading it. You go, his labor theory of value is not strictly correct. It's like, okay, dude, it's more than not strictly correct. It's a fundamental flaw. He got it completely wrong. And, and this little, like, his labor theory of value, something he took from classical economist David Ricardo, mind you. So it's not even his thing. It's like, yeah, but he took it and he fucking built a whole theory off of it. And it's wrong. It's all fucking wrong. And, and it's so poisonously wrong because it, it convinces you that the people who are helping you be economically productive are exploiting you, which is not the case. All right? So here's the next sentence. However, it is certainly true that many, if not most workers, are being exploited for profit. And that on the other hand, many owners of capital receive immense income from which they did nothing. Well, no, they didn't do nothing, man. That's the whole point. They didn't do nothing. They added, you va they added value to you just like you added value to them. And, and, and to say, like, um, oh, they, they get profit, it's like, well, you know, Workers kind of profit in a way, too. That's their salary. I don't know what to say. This is just, this is like, it's like why I think Marxism is so attract, it's so childish, man. It's so fucking childish. Let me just, I'm going to stop every now and then from reading this article and just go to some Marx quotes that I think, like, help me make my point. But it really is like, it, it's like this idea that appeals to a very simplistic, childish way of thinking. It's like, yeah, I did the work. I should get all the money. It's like, well, no, no one's hiring you for, that, for a reason that's not going to benefit them. They're not your parents. They're not in the business of charity. Here's Marx, okay? Here's Karl Marx's understanding of economics, okay? There's a quote from Karl Marx. For as soon as the distribution of labor comes into being, each man has a particular exclusive sphere of activity, which is forced upon him and from which he cannot ex escape. He is a hunter, a fisherman, a herdsman, or a critical critic, and must remain so if he does not want to lose his means of livelihood. While in communist society, where nobody has one exclusive sphere of activity, but each can become accomplished in any branch he wishes, society regulates the general production and thus makes it possible for me to do one thing today and another thing tomorrow, to hunt in the morning, fish in the afternoon, rear cattle in the evening, criticize after dinner, just as I have a mind without ever becoming a hunter, fisherman, herdsman, or critic. So that probably sounds nice if you're 10, right? Well, why, why should I have to be either a, a hunter or a fisherman? Why can't I be a hunter one day and a fisherman the next day? And then maybe I could drive a fire truck and the next day I could be a dinosaur. I mean, what's wrong? But shouldn't like even a fucking 10 year old start to see what the problem with that is? It's like, yeah, no, in a laissez-faire capitalist system, you actually can do that, but you're not going to be as economically productive because in the division of labor, people master different fields. So if you're starting as a hunter tomorrow and you've never fucking hunted, you're probably not going to produce as much. Whereas if you do that every day and you develop expertise in it, you'll probably be better at that. But this is the, this is the Marxist thought on economics. 
It's like, but wouldn't it be nicer this way? Well, I, I don't know. Okay, maybe. I'm bored of building. I'm going to be a doctor tomorrow. Right. Well, actually, to be a good doctor, you kind of got to devote decades to that. And there is nobody. Have you ever met anybody great at anything who did not devote decades to that? Have you? I'm willing to bet the answer is no. I'm willing to bet the answer is fucking no. I mean, anybody who is truly great at something puts countless hours into mastering that and if you look at people who are like like amazingly great you know you look at the michael jordans of the world or the fucking you know what i mean like the best of the best they're usually obsessive in the field that they're great at to the point of it being a flaw in many areas but yeah i mean this idea of like well, why can't i just do whatever i want whenever i feel like it I, am i crazy to describe that as a childish notion and this is a guy who's critiquing economics <laughs>